My name is TJ Gamble and this is Bruzel. But what does it actually take to get one of these in the state of Alabama? It's all told we spent about 400 bucks, but this is what we got. That's a good whiskey. There's a lot going on there. All right, we should be live on all sorts of platforms all over the internet. And by we, I mean me, because Jill is not feeling well this evening. So it's just going to be you and I, but we're going to have so much fun. We're going to make her wish she felt, I'm pretty sure she already wished she felt better, but she uh, cannot make it. So we're going to have a good time. Already got Zach Sharp showing some support over on YouTube. Appreciate that. Today, while Jill's not here, she's not here to tap my leg and let me know what's going on. We're going to get a little crazy. So let me know if you can see me. Let me know if you can hear me. If the audio video is coming through, we are live. We even added another platform. We got Facebook. We got TikTok. We got Twitch. We got X. We got Instagram. And of course, YouTube. Sean's already gone. Jill's not here. Bouncing on out of here. I don't see anything's coming in from the other platforms right now. But ah, look there. There's, there's TikTok jumping in here. What's going on, Windy City Smokers? Chad, Dwayne over there. We got Nicholas jumping in. Can see and hear. Sounds great. Bruzel, uh, we're on Twitch. We're everywhere. We are literally every freaking where. It's getting so complicated, though, that I'm going to have to start adding other folks to actually, like, check on the stream and do all this stuff. Because, like, right now, I'm not sure we're live on Facebook. And... Um, yeah, it looks like we are. I just didn't have it pulled up. It's a lot of work. There they are. There's Facebook. I see you over there, Chuck. Sean McCool jumping in here. Jake. All right. We got a lot to do. We got a lot to go over. We got a lot to try here. Costly Fungus over on Twitch jumping in. Bill Bags. All right. Looks like we've got them all pulled in. I don't know if anybody's joining from Instagram, but, you know, it is what it is. Oh, I see lots of Instagram folks here. Um, not sure why the stream's not showing. Oh, there it is. Okay. Instagram going as well. I, my Instagram uh, is not pulling in over here. So I'll, I'll try to catch up with the chat as much as I can. Appreciate y'all over on Instagram as well. We got, we're going to do a lot. We're going to do too much. I'm just going to let you know. The stream is going to get a little out of hand tonight because that's how we do it when Jill's not here. We want to talk about Jack Daniels. That's what we're going to talk about. The title was, Is Jack Daniels bourbon. Um, at least it was on YouTube and uh, Facebook, some of the other platforms, it may be simpler titles. But we are going to talk about that a little bit. That's just a fun title. But realistically, what I want to do is we get a ton of hate. Every single time I talk about Jack Daniels being good, we get hate. People are like, Jack Daniels is not good. Jack Daniels is awful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try a sample of every single bottle of Jack Daniels I have opened. We're going to do a one sample review, one taste review. Everybody knows the rules, even though I don't know what the deal is, Dave Portnoy, because those aren't the rules. Every single video I see, man, is like, I'm going to take one bite. That's the rules. And then he takes like three or four bites. So I might, I might be able to double dip a couple of times. We're going to take small samples. We're going to try every Jack Daniels product I have. And then after I've warmed my palate up on that, we are going to blind Old Forester 1924, the 10-year-old Old Forester, against my Jack Daniels 10-year right here. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be fun. Um, this is a fresh bottle, just been cracked open, just got it this weekend, versus a Jack that's been sitting around for a little while. You know, it's had a little more oxygen, opened up a little more. So I don't know if that's a fair fight. Y'all let me know in the comments if y'all think it's a fair fight. Man. Man. Instagram is active over there. So I appreciate y'all. I wish, I don't know why it's not pulling in to Instagram. I apologize for that. It's hard for me to see all the chats. Brian Klein, what's going on? Thomas with the barrel proof. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, we got small samples. Small, small, small samples. That's what we're going for. So um, try to not get too far out of hand with this one. Dylan Pardon with the super chat. How was City Farms in Tennessee? I was off the day you went. So we just went bourbon hunting in Knoxville, Tennessee, and we got a lot of really nice bottles. They rolled out the red carpet, the VIP experience in Knoxville for sure. And we'll talk about that a little bit too. I want y'all's opinion on that. Um, we're also going to go over barrel pick updates. I have a ton of barrel pick updates. We have literally a ton of whiskey coming 
and a lot to talk about. A lot has changed since we last spoke about barrel picks. A lot has changed. Um, if you're interested in barrel picks, of course, you could join the uh, B team over on the Brusel Patron. You have to join at a lower tier and kind of work your way up. Um, but we're going to release those in the Brusel Club. And uh, how you know about those and, and get access is via the Patron. So uh, let's get started with a little bit of Jack Daniels, and then we'll keep talking, right? I'm going to slide these guys out of the way right here. And then uh, we're going to warm up with a little Jack Daniels bonded. There's a bunch of them. Thoughts on Sinatra, Michael says over on YouTube. Uh, we're going to try it here in just a minute, Michael. That's what we're going to do. We're starting with the bonded. 100 proof, fairly new release, at least in this bottle. Um, I've also got another bonded over there, which is like, I think the, um, the one liter that's only for like export markets. A little bit of harshness on that, but really good. You get some of those kind of soft banana notes, a little bit of, you know, it's like, it's like banana honey nut Cheerios or something on that thing. Like I, I like the bonded. I don't drink it a ton. I mean, you see, we have gone pretty far into this bottle, but this bottle's got to be two plus years old. Before the price, it's pretty good. Now, I don't want to wash a hundred Glen Cairns after a stream. So I'm going to rinse my Glen Cairn. If you happen to be somebody like A. A. Ron that was on here a couple of weeks ago that is adverse to the sound of a glass washer, just letting you know what's coming. Okay, um, nothing I can do about it, but let you know that I'm going to rinse this glass in between each of these samples because um, I don't want to spend 10 hours down here washing glasses. All right, watching for Virginia Keith is over on uh, Facebook. What's up, CD player? You remember A.A. Ron? If everybody was here for the A.A. Ron episode, let me know in the chat right now. He got a, he didn't like the, he's like, nobody else washes glasses during the stream. It's just a little rinse, A.A. Ron. Chill out, man. All right, right here is the Triple Mash, which, again, 100 proof, and it is a blend of American malt, rye, and Tennessee whiskeys, which on the surface sounds like something I would not like, right? We're going to try this one. And then we are going to try the rye, and then I'm going to get right into barrel pick updates. I want to get these out of the way early before I drink too many of these barrel-proof Jack Daniels, if you know what I mean. This is live, Michael, over on YouTube. Is it live? Is it, does it not seem live? I had somebody ask a little while ago if I was Brusel AI. No, I'm not artificial intelligence. I'm traditionally intelligent. Uh, yes, JJ, this is really a live. And on the surface, again, malt whiskey, not my thing. I think they blended it exceptionally well, though. And that's a nice pour. I like the bonded better, I will admit. But still, a nice pour. What's up, Mike Holmes over on X? My, I hate that the Instagram feed's not coming in here. I apologize for that. Brusel AI Short Barrel says over on Instagram. Short Barrel swung by there this weekend. That, that might get out of hand. Like every time I go by Short Barrel, I want to leave with like six barrels of whiskey. Uh, it's a problem. It is a problem. Keep passing on the mash. I like it. It's different, but the malt's not real strong with it. So I'm TI. I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, Oklahoma in the house. What's up, Johnny? Let me rinse this again. Sorry, sorry. I'm going to name the dishwasher. The, the dishwasher we're getting in there is going to be called A.A. Ron. I'm going to have it wrapped, and it's going to be A.A. Ron. That's what we're going to do. Oh, one more. Next one. We need the A.A. Ron. Uh, don't have to wash it. Just never wash it. It's the Infinity Glen Cairn. You just always... Uh, just keep reusing it dirty. Cleveland, Ohio on Twitch. What's going on, Cleveland? How you doing? You find any good whiskey this weekend? Russell's Tenor Eagle Rare. I'm going to go with the Eagle Rare, although I do like the Russell's Tin as well, for sure. 
Buck got my still Austin barrel pick in over the weekend. Absolute fire and love the bourbon cowboy tater. I appreciate that, Buck. Um, Leighton Sharp, what are your top three Jack Daniels? I know Coy Hill is one. So we'll go through that. as we, We're going to go through, through every Jack Daniels I have open. We're going to talk about my favorites um, for sure while we go through them. If you got a, if you got a minute to hang out with me, I'm going to get to every one of those, Leighton. I appreciate the support. But if you just want to know off the top of my head, Coy Hill, the, um, the uh, limited edition rye from 2020, and probably the twice barreled rye is, um, but we also got some things to talk about on Jack Daniels for sure. <laughs> Sam with the AA Ron edition Bruzel Glen. All right, so this is the bonded rye. I get bonded, 100 proof. Um, I like the Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof rise. I've barely drank this one. Like you see, I've had this bottle as long as I've had the other ones I just tried. For some reason or another, we never gone back to it. So I always just grab the barrel strength rye. And I see why. Like that's good. It's not as special as the barrel strengths. Like I just need more going on with it than I get with um, this 100 proof. It's good, that's a good rye. If you're just getting into rye, it has a little more oakiness than a lot of rye on the market, but it's not like super rye forward. Like that is a bourbon friendly rye. I know we gotta talk about Jack Daniels being a bourbon or not. Um, I guess it's a Tennessee whiskey friendly rye if you don't, uh, if you don't believe that Jack Daniels is a bourbon. So let, let's talk about Jack, is Jack Daniels a bourbon? Then we are going to talk about barrel pick updates. And then I'm gonna finish the other like, I don't, how many do I really have here? Four, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 Jack Daniels. We're gonna finish trying 14 Jack Daniels. If I had to rank these so far, I would go bonded rye triple mash. That's my order so far, bonded rye triple mash. Uh, is Jack Daniels a bourbon? Yes. It is a bourbon, um, but then it's not a bourbon. So technically, it's not a bourbon. By law, not a bourbon. Uh, bourbon cannot have any flavors added. And Jack Daniels, I think they actually sued to say they're not a bourbon. They are a Tennessee whiskey. It goes through the Lincoln County process where it is filtered through charcoal, thus making it not a bourbon. Technically, filtration is subtractive, not necessarily additive, right? Like it takes things away, doesn't add things. So the argument could be made that you're not adding any flavor, you're subtracting flavors, thus making it a bourbon. So you could argue that Tennessee whiskey is a, a more specific subset of bourbon, but I guess you could also argue that it, it's not bourbon at all. Ah, uh, buck, there's two bucks in here. I like two bucks don't make a right. That's all I can say. Um, Echoes in Eternity over on YouTube. Hope to catch up soon. Hit me up sometime. Come over, drink my whiskey. Um, let's see. Trying to catch up with all of the chats. They don't make the triple mash anymore. Y'all sure about that? I don't know if I don't think that was limited. So I, I still see them around. You can get them. Can't get single barrel, barrel proof in your country. Bill Beck's, what country is that? Because I might have an answer for you in just a second when we talk about barrel picks. When we talk about barrel picks, I got a lot of, lot of updates with barrel picks. I might be able to, depending on the country, depending on the country. Uh, Y'all hit the thumbs up, the like button, whatever button it is that tells people that you're enjoying the stream on whatever platform you're on, unless you're not enjoying the stream. And then... Thanks for hanging out for a minute. Uh, Stone Reaper, I love the Old Pepper bottled in Bond Bourbon. Have you tried it? I have an Old Pepper. I don't think it's the Bonded. The funny thing is, is I had the Old Pepper. I didn't love the one I bought. And then I tried somebody else's Old Pepper, the decanter. Um, I think it's the, they got the decanter Old Pepper now too, right? That was out of this world good. So I need to go back. I need to get me some more Old Pepper. Texas in the house, looking for a Texas bourbon. Grab some Garrison Brothers. Go about your business, man. That's as, that's as quintessential Texas as you can get. Or Still Austin. I like Still Austin. I think Still Austin's a little more not Texas, you know, not, not super Texas-y, but still good stuff. 
Australia. I don't think we can ship to Australia yet, Bill Bags. Sorry about that. But let's talk about barrel picks. I'm going to pull up my phone because there's a lot. And I'm probably going to remember about half of what I'm supposed to tell y'all here. But, okay, so we had somebody somebody in the Discord, somebody in the Brusel Discord. You know, the Brusel, they, they watch the Brusel channel. And then they go to the Brusel Discord, which I will be at the Brusel Discord after this stream. I'm going to jump in the Discord. If you are a patron, you can link your patron to the Discord. We'll be in the audio-only chat, uh, the supporter-only area of the, uh, of the Discord. But they're in there. They're interacting with the community that we facilitate through the channel, which we love. We love the community. We love our Discord. We love the folks in there. And they, you know, have joined the Brusel patron and decided they didn't didn't want to be a member anymore. And they're um, they're telling me like, like, why would they why would they get a Brusel pick when they can just order them online from some unnamed retailers that we won't bring into this discussion? And the answer is, you probably should just order from those retailers. You probably shouldn't if you don't want to support the channel. If you just want to buy barrel picks, it's probably your best bet. Or is it? Like we got some stuff we're cooking up here. People aren't giving us time. And I'm about to give you all a little sample of some of the really, really dumb things we're working on. We are pushing the envelope to the max, okay? Pushing it to the max. We had a drop like last weekend, weekend before this past one. That was like 1,450 bottles we ran through on that one. And we've got another one we're building up. So the next one, we don't have a date yet. Hopefully, end of next month, we're going to have another release. Right now, we've got a Ben Holiday Rickhouse Proof Single Barrel um, Soft Red Wheat sitting there ready to go. That one's 100% in. Number two, Ben Holiday Rickhouse Proof Bourbon, 100% locked in, sitting there. Number three, Frey Ranch. Got confirmation that it is shipping this week. Should, barring something unforeseen, be in the next drop. We also have three barrels of Old Soul. Honestly, in my opinion, the three best barrels of Old Soul I've ever tried. Now, I've only tried six or seven before we tried ours. But out of the six or seven I've tried, I mean, nine, well, I mean, I guess we tried, we tried eight in that stream. So I've had 15 of them or so. Out of the 15 I've tried, we bought the three best barrels of Old Soul I've ever tried. Um... And those are being bottled in late March and early April. And so they might be there. They might not. Don't know yet. But we also have been told, again, we got to wait till the retailer comes through. But we have been told that we have a bottle that we did not select of Buffalo Trace that will be in this release. So we'll have a Buffalo Trace store pick as well. But, like, nobody really goes to Buffalo Trace and makes picks anymore much. Like, they usually just send them out. Um, it's a select few usually that win the opportunity to go there. Um, we also have some misfits we can pick from. We'll see. I'm still debating if these make it. But we've got an old Potrero rye that's just weird and not for everybody, but it's interesting. Uh, we've got a Rebel Cast Strength 120 proof. We've got a Knob Creek 120 proof. We might add those in there. We might. We might not. Um, and then we've got some picks. Let's talk about the picks we've already done that are on their way, we don't, but we don't have a timeline on it. We bought four barrels of Tennessee whiskey from Old Dominic. Might be one of the best Tennessee whiskeys on the market, barring some of this Jack Daniels stuff I'm going through. We bought a barrel from New Riff. We bought two barrels from Detling. We bought, uh, we've got a Crittenden's Toasted Pecan coming. We've got a Crittenden's Four Grain coming. We've got a Crittenden's Double Oak coming. And then we get into some we're about to pick. We've got samples here from Paul Sutton. Um, interesting stuff there. And we're talking to Barrel Craft Spirits about doing a rewind on the old school. The first barrel pick we ever did was the Barrel Craft Spirits Brusel Orange Label. Maybe running another one of those. Or, or doing something a little different. And I'm about, I'm gonna, I'm gonna catch up on the chat real quick, try to get any questions on that. And then we're going to talk about the dumb stuff, okay? The really, really dumb stuff that I've got here, all right? Misfits Rebel, you didn't even get a notification, Nick. What's up with that? 
I don't know what's going on. I don't know why the notifications didn't come in. My basement is already full, Neil. I don't know what I'm going to do. Heaven Hill, Bill. Well, we might be able to talk about a little Heaven Hill, too. Might be able to talk about a little. Ooh, I can't keep up. It's 1.20 a.m. School is starting at 7.50. And we're four bottles of vodka deep. Man, drink bourbon. It'll, it, won't, it won't keep you awake like that. Uh, new Riff, eight-year. I'm not sure the age on the New Riff. I'll have to go back and look at the stats to find out what those were. Um, all right. All the good stuff was gone by the time I received the email. Bill, we are working on communication. We'll talk about that here in a second, too. We'll talk about what we're working on as far as how the picks will drop. I don't know if we'll have it finished by this next release, but don't depend on the emails. Go to the club page and log in. Um, that's going to that's gonna help you a whole bunch. But let's talk about the dumb stuff. Let's talk about how, how Bruzel is taking it to the next level here, okay? Um, we are having conversations with a few distilleries about doing something that I haven't seen before. I'm sure it's been done. I haven't seen it. Definitely not from somebody that sits on YouTube and talks to a camera for a living. But we are having conversations with uh, Ben Holiday. First, we're going to Ben Holiday in June. And we are going to try to do a distillery takeover, a lot like we did with old Dominic. And we're gonna have as many people as wanna come to Weston, Missouri, and we are going to pick six barrels of Ben Holiday Rickhouse Proof. I want three bourbons. I want three weeders. That's number one. Six barrels, one sitting. Number two, we are going to stay an extra day. Uh, and oh, I was told we might be able to get a cave collection too. We might. We might be able to get a cave barrel. Don't know. We're going to find out. Um, we are also talking about staying an extra day and maybe doing a really special 18-barrel small batch blend. I, I said it. I, I didn't say eight. I didn't say 10. I said 18 special brusal collaboration. Now, I'm trying to talk them into pulling it for all from the top of the Rick House. 18 seventh floor barrels. I don't know if they're going to do that yet, okay? So don't, don't quote me if that doesn't work, but we'll do some sort of really weird, crazy something. But we're going to have a full brusal small batch blend of holiday. Okay? It's what we're trying to work on. We will we are we will be able to ship to New York. We can ship to by the time these drops, we should be able to ship to 49 states. Okay? Should be able to. Uh yeah, I'm stoned. Hey brother, please don't forget about Canada. i we're doing everything we can to try to get these into Canada. I don't know how long that's going to take or when it's going to happen though, right? So 18 barrel blend. All right, if you've seen that, let me know in the chat right now where you saw it. Let me know. Go ahead. I'm waiting. I'll keep talking, then I'll come back to you. Uh, next, we are talking to Old Dominic. Now, Old Dominic has their Hewling Station stuff, and that is their mash bill. They have distilled at MGP and aged in Indiana, and they've been releasing it under Old Dominic while they aged their own stuff. Like, they've been distilling for a long time. They just had to get their own mash bill that they distilled up um, up to snuff, up to age. And it is up to age, and it is beautiful. Like, their high rye bourbon is fantastic. Like, out of this world good to me. I like high rye bourbons. Um, so, we are talking to them, having a conversation tomorrow, about possibly doing a 10-barrel small batch collaboration blend with them. So, 18 holidays, 10 old doms. We're also having a conversation with Barrel Craft about maybe doing a bigger blend, right? Michigan, Jeffrey does not ship yet. It should ship by summer. By the time these drop, um, these big blends, by June or July, we were told, we should be able to ship to Michigan. So, uh, no, so that they'll be, yes, Mr. Uh, Pew War Eagle, um, they will, they, I mean, they got to be barrel proof. I don't want them if they're not barrel proof. Like, what are we doing? Like, these got to be a barrel-proof small batch. It has to be. Like, what are we doing if we, like, we need to make our whiskey, our whiskey needs to be in the bottle as God intended it. And that is whatever proof it came out of the barrel. That's how it was supposed to be, okay? We don't need to be watering this crap down. We also got a really cool opportunity with uh, Chicken Cock. 
Okay, don't be juvenile. Don't be. I see that smirk on your face. Don't be juvenile. But they did say we could custom do a, maybe do a double oaked, and we could have a custom label of me riding a chicken on the label, like full custom label, not tater stickered, full custom label of me riding a chicken. We'll see if that comes to fruition. It's what I asked for. It's what they said they would do. We also have 7-3 Distilling we're having some conversations with. We might do something here pretty good uh, with them. It looks like we're going to be headed down to the New Orleans Bourbon Festival here in a couple of weeks, too. So if you're down there, let me know. Uh, we're having a lot of conversations with Good Times Bourbon, Middle West, Watershed, ASW. Like, I'm, t- I'm still talking to folks at Short Barrel. We got some special things we're doing over there. Um Oh, we've got meetings scheduled right now. Nothing locked in, but we're talking to Backbone. And I really like that rabbit hole high gold cash strength. We dropped on the last one. I want my own barrel. So we got a conversation going with them as well. And we didn't even got to the biggest announcement. Like We did not even got to the big announcement yet. Y'all go ahead and drop your guesses in the chat. What do you think the big announcement is? Go ahead. Give me some guesses. Don't mash the chicken. Oh, let's see the pose for me riding the chicken. I'm going to have my cowboy hat on, though. Oh, Rayleigh's has some good stuff for sure. Let's see. Trying to catch up to all the chats here. I'm sorry. Like, Instagram's just not pulling my chat in. I don't know why it's not pulling my chat in. I don't know how to get it to pull the chat in, so I apologize. Neat Nate, we will be starting our own brand at some point in the future, but right now we're just trying to get people access the good whiskey. That's that's all my goal is right now is just getting y'all access to good whiskey. So let me know. I haven't seen any guesses that make sense. Uh, any updates for Spillway? We'll talk about that here in just a second too. All right, JD picks, JD picks. Eh, some y'all some good guesses. Y'all are some good guessers here. Um, all right, so we, let's finish these. Then I'll have some more, and then we'll talk about the Spillway event as well. All right, so we are, we have a, we now have a direct relationship with a little spirits producer you may have heard of called Brown Foreman, okay? And in that relationship, we are, we are top of the wait list for a Jack Daniels and Woodford Reserve um, two-barrel blend in one-liter bottles, as well as when Old Forester allocations are awarded. So we should have an Old Forester coming at some point when they award allocations. We could do a Jack Daniels and Woodford Reserve two-barrel blend in one-liter bottles. Uh, Andrew had a great weekend hunting. Jack Daniels single-barrel barrel-proof, Eagle Rare, Buffalo Trace, Weller Special Reserve, and a Field of Dreams. Ams? What is it? What is Field of Dreams? Ams. I don't I don't know what you mean, but uh, awesome, man. Sounds like you had a great Weekend hunting. And Jay Franco with the bruisal clout level is re- rising steadily. I dude, it's it's getting out of this out of this world. It's getting out of hand. Uh, and then we've got a wood for double oak pick that we're supposed to be getting samples on here pretty soon. And we're getting five barrels of Jack Daniels Distiller Select. Three barrel proof Tennessee whiskeys, two barrel proof rice. And what we're going to do is we're going to have some moderators on Discord, and they get to send in their profile that they want for each of their barrels. Like each barrel will be allocated to a moderator. They will send in their profile, and then the distiller will select the barrel based on that profile. And then I will try all the barrels of rye and the barrels of bourbon, and we will declare winners for each of those barrel picks to see who has the best, in my opinion, Jack Daniels single barrel, barrel proof um, barrel. So that, like, was that enough updates on barrel picks? Should I have done more? Should we have moved more mountains to try to do more crazy stuff? Y'all let me know if that's not enough, right? And that's why when somebody over in Discord is giving me a hard time, it's like, I can just order this stuff online. I'm like, you're right. But like, you gotta understand we're on step two, bro, and we go into 12. Like, calm down. You know, give me a minute. Whiskey moves slow. You know, we can't do this in a hurry. So, can't do it in a hurry, man. Whiskey moves slow. Oh, so, 
few things in the works here. I'm gonna pour myself another Jack Daniels. We are going to do this little mini bottle of Jack Daniels single barrel, barrel proof. I didn't even rinse it. We're just gonna go for it. Too much is never enough. We're pushing the limits. Like, I'll be honest, when we did our first barrel pick, I was like, I don't know if anybody will buy this barrel. And then we did four, and I was like, that's a little too much. And then we did five, and I was like, it's probably, and then we did five and a bunch of misfits. Like, three other barrels wasn't even ours. And I was like, it's probably a little too much. 18 barrels, probably a little too much. But we don't know till we do it, because the B team keeps coming through. Track the benchmark foolproof for the tune in. Awesome, Wayne, appreciate it. Oh. <sighs> Man, that is mm, just nuttiness. The banana notes start to tamper down just a little bit, right? I get a little more of that barrel char and that oakiness on it, and that is just, that's a beautiful whiskey. I, like anybody that hates on single barrel, barrel proof Jack Daniels, we just don't have similar palettes. I should be pouring these into an infinity blend over here. Lord have mercy. David Jenkins, have you ever tried the various offerings from Uncle Nearest? I've had one Uncle Nearest. I thought it was pretty good. I mean, I tend to lean toward the Jack Daniels stuff a little more for Tennessee whiskey, but I haven't had all their offerings. It's on my list to do, though. I need to get more Uncle Nearest. Field of Dreams is made from the corn from the Field of Dreams, the movie, and only 22,000 were made? And that's awesome. Um, I, I wasn't aware of this whiskey, so 22,000 were made. I, I mean, I... Did they cut the corn down like 50 years ago, or did they grow more corn? Have you tried the Old Forester 117 High Angel Share? Got lucky and snagged one last week through a friend. Uh, yes, Sam. That is one of the best Old Foresters I've owned. And I, when I owned it, I just had one sip. Like, somebody had one. They let me have a sip. I loved it. They gave me the last sip. Literally all I'd ever had. Hawk 620, appreciate the support. All right, we're going to keep going through these. I want to get through these because we're going to blind. For those that joined a little bit late, we are going to blind the 1924 10-year and this Jack 10-year. When I get done running my gums here, bumping my gums, running my trap, and I get done trying 14 Jack Daniels. That's what we're going to do. All right. What are we looking at on numbers over here? Let's see. Let's check the numbers. We got 1,000 watching over on YouTube. That's a little lower than usual. We're running everybody. Apparently, everybody wanted to see Jill. What are we doing? How are we doing over on Twitch? 13 on Twitch? That's rookie numbers there for sure. Facebook, 123 on Facebook. We got to put more effort into Facebook. That's what we got to do. Uh, X right now? Don't know if anybody's watching on X. 157 views total on X. Um, TikTok with the 74 going right now on TikTok. Appreciate all the support dropping those. Um, all right, so let's keep this train rolling right here. I've got another Jack Daniels single barrel barrel. Oh, yeah, and so on my, my order right now, this, this little bitty Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof is number one, okay? What does bonded mean? Uh, bonded means that it um, adhered to some laws, right? So it's... Um, all the grains are grown in one growing season. It's distilled um, and aged at, I mean, distilled technically, but it's its aged in a federally bonded warehouse for a minimum of four years, and, and um, it's released at 100 proof. Leave good times alone? Okay, you don't like good times? Man, I, all these TikTok chats are just all of a sudden flooding in that I didn't have a minute ago. Um, I activated something there. Oh, Knoxville was a good time. Knoxville was a good time for sure. All right, that one's not as good as the little bottle. That one's a little nuttier. There's a little more like just nuttiness on it. Um, so this one's still above the other ones, but it is below the little bitty bottle right there. But then we have one of these like heroes, these uh, the military tribute bottles with the dog tags on it. Kind of the same thing. Chris from YouTube jumping over on Twitch. Appreciate that. Ah, uh, got a JD barrel proof store pick. Straight banana bread and loving it. Appreciate it there, Hawk. Um, that is a good bottle. And that this one was a little nuttier. The first one had a little better balance to it. Michael's Love and Larceny Barrel Proof Batch A124 right now. Nice. 
Uh, weeded, you know, those are usually just caramel bombs. Can be really nice. I haven't tried the A124 yet, though. Appreciate it, Jordan. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's a lot. Bourbon's a lot, right? But you just keep enjoying what you enjoy, and it'll all come to you. Is Jack Daniels bourbon? Yes, Joe Price. And no. It is, but it isn't. Um, it is a bourbon, but they argued that it was not because it's filtered, but filtration is not additive, so this still technically makes it a bourbon. But for marketing purposes, it's not. And, uh, I, you know, I don't think that's, this is all in, a, in my opinion, to make sure Jack Daniels doesn't come after me or take my barrel picks away. Chris is jumping back from Twitch. Mm. I like this better than the other single barrel barrel proof I have. I'm trying to decide if I like it better than the small one. Yeah, I think that's a degree above the small one. Without going back to the small one, that is the best Jack Daniels we've tried so far, and we are six of them deep. So we only have seven more to go before we hit this blind. Andrew Price sipping on a 1924. I enjoy the 1910. I had a sample of the 24 they sent us, so I do have that, and um, but I haven't had a bottle, right? So just got it. New to bourbon, got a bottle of 1910 and didn't care for it. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of the 1910 either. Their double oaked wasn't that great to me. I love a, a um, Woodford double oaked, but and some of these Jack Daniels twice barrels, we're going to try those in a second. Um, but then, you know, after that, it's, I don't know, the the Woodford double oaked, or not, yeah, the, excuse me, the Old Forester double oaked. Not my jam. This is a store pick, single barrel, Jack. I think this is a 90 proof rye, 94 proof rye, little red label rye. 2X double oaked in Keeper Series is insane. Man, I passed on that bottle the other day. I should have bought it. That's pretty good. I didn't get enough of that. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to go back to that. We need to get through these Jack Daniels right here. I want to get to this blind. Mr. Sam's Tribute, I have not tried that. That's an expensive one. I I haven't brought myself to buy one. I've, I've seen it a couple of times, but I'm not paying over $1,000 for that. Just comparing the lineage. No, I get you, Andrew. No problem. I'm just, somebody over here was asking about it. Um, My wife hated whiskey until we did the JD. Your single barrel tasting room, learn how to sip it properly. Single barrel, barrel proof, rye was legit. See, you just got to find the right one, and then the next thing you know, you're headed down the rabbit hole. Brian's checking in from Tennessee. Um, We're going to try the 12-year. Yes. That's good. Why have I not been drinking this bottle? It's not as good as the single barrel, barrel proofs. I would probably, I might like that a little better than the bonded. Honestly, like that's crazy. I didn't expect that. I don't know if that's just an exceptionally good pick. This is like the only uh, red label Jack Daniels rye I think I've ever owned. But that's nice. Who did that pick? That's a liquor lineup pick out of Vegas. Uh, somebody asked about my go-to bottle shop in Columbus, Georgia. The bottle shops where I've got the most stuff um, been finding a lot of luck with Maple Party Shop lately, though, so definitely check that one out if you've never been there. Okay, now we're getting a little crazy. Let's knock these rise out right, right quick. Oh, it looks like I got another barrel proof. Or, no, that's, that's a rye, too, isn't it? Yeah, that's a rye. All right, so we're going to do the single barrel barrel proof rye first. No Jill or Will tonight. No, Jill wasn't feeling well, and Will is two hours away at home, so it is just me. So I get to get out of hand just a little bit, um, blend them all, and do a pour at the end. So I've been dumping a little bit of what was left, but some of these I finished. Um, I'll go back and blend them all at the end if that makes you feel good, if I can If I can talk. We got to keep it. We're trying to, you know, Jill's not here to tap me on the leg, but I'm trying to keep it, uh, keep it under control. 
Well, I don't have a gentleman jack. I don't have a gentleman jack. It's been a long time since I've had one of those, Chris. So I, I you know, it's pretty good, but. Mm. Twitch chat is a thousand percent better than the YouTube experience. I, I mean, I understand, but there's also not as many people, so that's why it's not moving super fast over there, Joker. Indiana in the house. And Jake does not like the Packers. I have no dog in that fight. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Like, the question is, is do I like single barrel barrel proof rye better than single barrel barrel proof Jack Daniels? I just never would have thought I'd be that guy. Like, I'm just not sure I'm that guy. Well, um, well, uh, Martin, ever come to the UK and do a scotch hunt? I'm going to come to the UK and do a bourbon hunt. I don't know about scotch. We're like, what would I look for with scotches? I don't know anything about them. I do have a Sinatra. We're going to try that in just a second. This is a very difficult decision. I'm going to say that I like this one better than two, definitely one of these barrel proofs. I think I like it better than all these barrel proofs. I think I like it better than all these barrel proofs. So this is the new leader right here. Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof rye. I just, it's just, it's a high rye bourbon is what it tastes like to me or high rye Tennessee whiskey. Um, but I like, it's just so freaking good. So freaking good. Uh, Eagle Rare Pour the other night. Definitely think it's going to be one of my next bottles I pick up. Dustin, go for it. Why is rye so good? I don't see, I don't like super rye forward uh, whiskey, but like these, come on. Uh, we did put a barrel in the Lincoln to see if it would fit, Alex. It does fit. One will fit in the trunk, um, but we, uh, we haven't filled it up with anything. Devin wished I'd have kept that bottle of Eric Church. It's just single barrel Jack Daniels barrel proof. Like, just get a regular, get one of the five barrels we're going to have. Okay, this one is the twice-barreled special release Jack Daniels rye right here. And I can go ahead and tell you this is going to move to the top of the list. Like I, I just know this one already is going to jump all of those. Uh, Jake says, what's your thoughts on E.H. Taylor small batch? Um, I like the small bag. It's a great bottle at 50 something dollars. Just don't get out of hand with it. Six pack Johnny blue. Any good? I don't know anything about Johnny blue, Oregon spirit, rye. I'll have to check that out over on TikTok. Uh, I do have a 10. We're going to try 10 here in just a second. Oh my goodness. See, it hits me. The, the oak tannins hit me a little harsher today than they do traditionally. And I like that. I like that a lot. But it's still an occasional thing for me. It's still like not something I'm going to go to a lot. And I thought it was just going to jump to the top. But I just don't think it is. I just don't think it's better than, just outright better than that single barrel, barrel proof. Rye. I'm just talking about sitting down and having a pour of it. So I'm going to put this one above one of these single barrel barrel proofs but not above them all i think it's i think those two single barrel barrel proofs are better than that to me on a regular basis and i think that single barrel rye is better than that um, on a regular basis but this i'm gonna have to get a fresh glen after that double oak it's uh super oaky ah uh, florida sounds g how do your floating shelves hold all that weight um, physics is, uh, so this is a concrete block wall behind me, um, with drywall, it's lathing and drywall over it. And so the shelves float, they're, you know, they're open on both ends, but they're like a metal bar and the metal bar is, um, attached to, you know, through, like, like we cut out the lathing and drywall and it's attached all the way to the concrete block. And then it has rods that stick out like the whole depth of the shelves and the shelves are drilled to slide over that. And so you've just got these, you know, it's got a steel infrastructure basically attached to concrete to hold all that weight. And I still get a little nervous with it. The ones we're doing in the new studio are going to have a little more support because they have a much longer run. Like the, we'll have a thousand bottles behind us when we get the new studio going. Appreciate it, Greg. Dr. Pepper Palette Cleanser. That's what, we, 
like a professional. Only, only the pros. You see somebody doing DPZs right here as a palate cleanser, you know they're professionals. What's the proof on the single barrel barrel proof rye? This one right here is very, very difficult to read. It is like gold writing on green letters and all the lights on that side. So I'm going to get a little light on it. It appears to be 117 proof. No, that's not right. I can't read. Hold on. We got to do the old fashioned take a picture and blow it up. That's what we got to do. 137.0. 137.0 proof. Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof. This right here is the 2020 special edition limited Jack Daniels rye. This was the one they dropped when they're like, I wonder if people want to rye from Jack Daniels. Like, let's just, let's take some of the best ones. Let's drop it before we flood the market with these single barrel barrel proofs. Dr. Pepper versus Pib, man, that's like Mike Tyson fighting Jake Paul. That's not a freaking contest. What are we talking about? Like, what are we talking about? Seriously. How's Weller 12 year hunter? Uh, it's pretty good. Oh my God. It's not that good though. It's not that good. Mm, it's good stuff. Uh, how does that, how does it compare to the Mictors? So we'll talk about this in the Mictors because this is my favorite rye on the entire planet. The second favorite is the Mictors. The Mictors was my favorite when I bought them. I just got this bottle since that one. And man, this one is softer. Like it's not as like in your face. It drinks super low proof, even though it's 131. I, I would have probably put that 110 proof. It is just drinking. It, it is so good. Just rye, caramel, butterscotch. I know that's caramel, but like it just sweeter um, caramel. Like that is just a beautiful whiskey. That is my favorite rye on the planet. And by far, by wide margin, the best Jack Daniels we've tried so far. That is like if you can get a 2020 limited edition Jack Daniels, don't do it. Just tell me where it's at. Like, you don't want to waste your money on this. Just tell me where it's at because I that's that's one of those bottles, as long as I can afford it, I'll just buy every one of them. Like, I'm not going to pay full secondary for anything much, but, like, not, not with my money. Corporate money, maybe, but that's my money. Um, I'll buy them. Playing a trip to Kentucky... And Tennessee, what you can't miss distilleries for a first timer. Look, Greg, it's hard to go wrong with distilleries. I'll go to the focus on the major ones. Um, we're, I mean, we're working on a lot of content. I haven't been to all of them yet. We're kind of saving that until we start doing that content. But you can't go wrong with a major distillery. They're all really, really fun. Why would twice barrel? So it just adds more oak. Um, it just adds more oak, Jay. My goodness. Like, I don't know how you would make a rye better than that. I don't know how you would make a rye better than that. Somebody tell me we'll both know. So we're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten Jack Daniels in, and we've got them ranked so far. We've got three more, and then we are going to blind the 1924 10 year versus the 10 year Jack Daniels and see how this goes. So you would need to like the oak, Jay. Exactly. And sometimes it's good. That pour came across a little harsher um, than I would have liked. I like that bottle, but it's just a, it's an occasion. Sometimes if you're drinking whiskey and you're just coming down here and you're just having a pour, you're having a few pours, lots of times I want something, you know, that's just kind of easy to get into, um, not too distracting. You know, it's just background noise on you, you know, enjoying a movie or, you know, listening to some music. And sometimes you want an experience. You want something that's different, a strongly finished whiskey or something that has some more unusual flavors. And these double oaks like this are that. Like, I really like them when I want them, but it's not something I'm just going to have regularly, if that makes sense. Um, hopefully that makes sense to y'all. Man, we still got, I, I've got to get, I've got to, and I apologize if y'all watching over on Instagram. I can't see your comments. I will work on it. I set it up. I thought it was pulling the comments. 
It is not, so I apologize that I cannot see those. Um, so I can look at a little of them, a little bit of them. 108 Genetics right there in the house. Midmo Marine, will you sample the Jack 12? Yes, we're about to do that in two more pours. I got one more, then we do the 12, and then we hit the Grand Pappy, okay? Y'all let me know what y'all think the, the best Jack Daniels is. I'm saving what I think the best Jack Daniels is for the last pour. Y'all go ahead and drop it in the chats. Let me know what you think the best Jack Daniels is. I'm going to get a fresh Glen Cairn on this one. A.A. Ron will be happy with that, that we're not washing Glens. But I don't want to go from a rye back to a bourbon. I said it. I said it. I said it. This is the Sinatra Select right here. Now, this is designed to be what Jack Daniels was back when Frank Sinatra was drinking the brand. You know, the 50s, the 60s. Jack Daniels used to be released at 90 proof. It used to be a little older with a little more oak on it. And they decided to make it younger and they decided to take it to 80 proof because nobody drinking Jack Daniels cared. Like that's really, they're like, we changed it and nobody noticed. Nobody kicked up a fuss. Everybody just kept buying it because the people who were drinking Jack Daniels was mixing it in their Cokes anyway or pouring it over ice. They didn't notice the difference in a little bit less oak and the fact that it was 10 proof points lower. So they got to do a little shrinkflation right there, keep the price the same, get more yield out of it by watering it down a bit, and get those barrels to market faster by not having to sit on them. So they made a bunch more money by taking it from 90 proof and older to 80 proof and younger, and nobody cared. So um, what they've done here is, this is not particularly older, but they use grooved barrels that have a little more oak impact on them, and this is released at 90 proof. This is better than old number seven, okay? It's better than old number seven. This is not six times better or whatever the price difference is between this and old number seven. Um, like you just, you gave me a different type of barrel and you let it age in a dip, you know, I mean, you, you gave me a different type of barrel, you didn't let it age any longer and you added 10 proof points. So double the price. Don't six exit, right? J-Rock's going for the leg tap already. I don't need the leg tap. I'm just trying to talk too fast, J-Rock. Trying to keep the energy up. Ooh, that smells really nice. So it's at a severe disadvantage because we've been going through so many high proof things. Um, so that hurts it. That hurts it. And I'm trying to think, like, this does not stand up to the barrel-proof stuff. I enjoy the barrel-proof stuff much, much more than this. But is this better than a bonded, though? Right? 100 proof. Like, this is 90. That's 100 proof. That's four years old. This is probably around the same in a grooved barrel. I don't think I like that better than the bonded. I just don't think I do. I like it. It's good stuff. It's better than old number seven. I would probably put this next to last right up above the triple mash. Now, I don't have an old number seven. Um, I think Jill mixed all that with Coke when we had some folks over months ago at this point. So I don't have it. Um, $200. No, no, no. No, I haven't had Redwood Rocket Top. Sagamore Cash Strength, yes. Uh, just had a store pick Sagamore um, Cash Strength that we were trying the other day. It was weird. It was interesting. It was different. It was good. No, it's not worth $170. Not even close to worth $170. For $170, you're getting a story. You're getting a box. Typically, I've seen them for sale without the box now. Um, you're getting a book. It is a one liter, I think. It's a big old bottle. Um, but how much would I pay for a Sinatra? How much do I think a Sinatra's worth? Well, I like the bonded better. So less than that. Less than that. Is a twice barreled rye worth $400? I mean, right now it's sitting below. If I'm just talking about enjoyability, it's fifth right now 
right? This is definitely worth more. Um, and then I liked this, just the single barrel, barrel proof rye I've got open better than that. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I have a Sagamore double, double oaked there, David. Ah, uh, you a fan of Four Roses single barrel? Yes, barrel proofs especially. You like the triple mash better than the bonded? I did going into this. I thought I did. Um, and I swear I've done some blinds in the past. Today, the bonded is feeling better to me. So, drinking a Knob Creek rye, got on clearance. Awesome. So, we've got two more Jack Daniels we're going to try. And we've almost gotten through all of these in the first hour. We're going to have to slow down in the second hour. I'm just going to, it may be boring in the second hour. I'm just going to go ahead and let you know. We're just going to have to answer questions and talk to y'all. Wild Turkey Generations haven't had that yet. Uh, Irons Ones out of Huntsville have not. All right, so the next one, the next to last, actually, technically, I've got this 10 year we got to do too. This is 12 year old Jack Daniels. I don't know why the rye is so good. Maybe because they're not trying to say it's not a bourbon. It's a joke. It's a joke, people. Calm down. Every day go to around the fire with your buddy's port. It's Weller Antique 107. God damn. I just want to crawl up in this glass right here and just take a nap. Like that is just beautiful, beautiful whiskey. It makes me mad that they've got these barrels laying around and they won't let me buy 20 of them. Yes, yeah, so Jack Daniels, it, it, it's the same whiskey that's in old number seven, but I think this is 107 proof. Yeah, 107 proof, and it's been in that barrel for 12 years. And this is just. That's number one with a bullet there. Um and there's a gap. Like, I like that rye a lot. I like that rye a lot. That 12-year is in a league by itself compared to the ones we've had thus far. Uh, if you get a chance, now, I don't know what release that is. That might have been the first release. I've had that one a little while. Uh, we have gone through one bottle of that already, and that's the second one I got. But it is so freaking delicious. Like, by far, the best Jack Daniels we've had. The single barrel... Special release rye is a good step above anything we had. And then the 12 is marching on past that. And I can't believe I just poured that 12 in this glass over here, but we're trying a lot of whiskey. So, but then the man is back in town right here, right? Like, I think we're about to jump into another tier. Apparently there's a lot of tiers when it comes to these Jack Daniel releases, but this is the first release of Coy Hill. Now this was a, um, these were the single barrel Coy Hills. Yeah, single barrel special release. This one's 142 proof Jack Daniels. I have no idea how old these are. I don't know anything about this, but the color on it, super dark red. The proof is nuclear. Definitely hazmat. We're just gonna take a little sample of this one because I will need a leg tap if we start drinking too much of this one. But it's, um, mm. Jonathan sipping on a Woodford double oaked here in Florida. One of my favorite pours. Nice. Appreciate the support there, Jonathan. Um, this does not smell as good as the 12. Like it just doesn't have that. Like, like the 12 just has like a softer kind of vanilla, this one is just, this one just wants to beat you up. I'm just be honest. This one just wants to hit you on the head with a club. Is the YouTube stream down? Y'all let me know on YouTube. Is the stream down? Uh, let me check on it real quick. Looks like it's up, up for me. Well, hold on. I'm way behind. No, nope, seems to be up. So if you're having a problem over there, flopper, seems to be up. Maybe reload unless somebody banned you. I don't think so. I didn't see anybody get banned. So the thing about Coy Hill is I didn't pour enough of it. That's the number one thing. Um, I was trying to be good because these are hard to get. 
and uh, I needed a little more. So, whew, man. This is not as approachable as that 12. This is just, just raw energy, right? Like this is just over the top, attack on the senses, all the heat in the world, 140 something proof. Um, it is just, this is an experience. This is again, like I was saying with the double oak, this is an occasional whiskey. You don't sit down and drink a lot of this, right? You have a little sip of this every once in a while. Like you see, how we've been nursing this bottle. I've had this one for, what, two years now? Um, definitely over a year. I don't know about two, but I've had this one over a year, and we are just not drinking a lot of this because when you have it, you have, like, that much. And, I, like, this is definitely my favorite Jack Daniels. But honestly, most days, I would rather have the 12. This is one of those just blow your senses out of the water, but if I'm just sitting down having a pour, the 12 year, that's what I like about the 12 year because it is awesome, fantastic, but it's also like an everyday sipper at 107 proof. I mean, it's not an everyday sipper as far as like availability goes or price, but if you could get them, if they released enough of them to satisfy demand, the 12 is better um, for, for that, for regular sipping. But this is, this is still the king right here. Like, give me a break. Um, all right, so we have gotten through the Jack Daniels. I'm going to review my order of every Jack Daniels I own right now that I've got open on the bar, and then we are going to blind 1924, the 10-year-old, and then we are going to do the 10-year-old Jack Daniels. I probably need to try the 10-year-old Jack Daniels and put it in this ranking real quick, don't I? Because, I mean, that's not fair to it. Just a little drop of Coy Hill in my Infinity Blend over here. David Payton, Weller Special Reserve is not in any way worth $59 a bottle. No, no, it's not. But it is one of the best things I've ever mixed with Coke. One of, like top 10 best things I've ever missed with, mixed with Coke. The 10's good. It's trying to be the 12. Like it's providing a lot of those similar notes, like much more kind of marshmallow vanilla notes but they're just not as sharp and well-rounded. I don't like this. It's definitely not better than Coy Hill. It's not better than the 12. I don't like this better than the special release rye. And I, I think maybe some batches of this might be better than the one I've got. Like I could see how it would be better than this bottle. But do I like it better than the single barrel barrel? Probably. This is going to be third or four. Fourth, excuse me, fourth. Um, so we're going to do that. Let me review our order, and then we'll do the blind of 1924 and this one. I had Jill pour the blind just a little while ago, so we'll be able to do that here in just a second. Joshua, I haven't done any reviews on Blue Run. I did get a, a Blue Run rye the other day that was just beautiful, out of this world. Um you have any places around Chattanooga, Tennessee to get allocated products for around MSRP? Unfortunately, we have not done a hunt in Chattanooga yet. We drive through it several times, um, but we haven't stopped to hunt yet. GD10 is at batch three. Yeah, I don't know what batch this is, though. And another problem with this one is it's like 90, is that 92 proof? 97 proof, so it doesn't have the proof to stand up to the 12. So they got the proof right on the 12. I don't know, why would you not drop this at 107 proof? Like, what are we doing, Jack Daniels? What are we doing? Like, they didn't want the 10 to be good enough. So, bring your Coy Hill to the next bottle share. So let me talk, before we go through this, I'm going to, before we go through this and we get to the blind, <laughs> excuse me, uh, we are going to talk about the spillway event. April 6th, the 6th of April. What are we like, a few weeks away from that at this point? Something like that? We are going to be in Brandon, Mississippi at Spillway Wine and Spirits. They are having their annual whiskey lottery. So you show up every hour. They're going to draw tickets. They're going to have 100-plus bottles every hour. 
for like five plus hours, you draw a ticket, you win a chance to go in there and buy a bottle at a reasonable price. They're gonna have a ton of barrel picks you can only get in and around Mississippi. They're gonna have a ton of distillers. I know Seth Detling's gonna be there. Uh, Matt Crittenden's gonna be there. They're gonna have quite a few other distillers. They're gonna have a ton of barrel picks. They're dropping the Crittenden's toasted pecan and a whole bunch of his barrel picks, which we love. Uh, they're gonna, it's gonna be an event. We're gonna do an infinity barrel. So we're gonna be at Old Soul the day before. We'll talk about that in a second. And then we're gonna bring over a barrel, an empty barrel. You bring a bottle of bourbon or Tennessee whiskey, unfinished, you pour it in the barrel, you get a sticker. At the end of the day, we're gonna pump you out a bottle of that infinity blend. So worst, worst case, you come, Will's gonna be there, Jill's gonna be there, we're gonna have a merch tent set up, it's gonna be a party in the parking lot, we're gonna have a good time. I know a lot of folks are talking about camping, you don't really need to camp for this event because you just like you just walk up there and get a ticket and you get your name drawn, right, or your ticket drawn, and then you get in line. So you can, like it's a parking lot, he, he doesn't care, um, but you don't need to to try to get access to the whiskey. Uh, I know a lot of folks are renting Airbnbs. Like, we're going to have a really big party there April 6th. So if you're in and around Brandon, Mississippi, or you got a day off, it's a Saturday, head on over. We're going to be there having a fantastic time, and you're going to get access to some cool bottles of whiskey. Um, the day before, it is not locked in yet, but we're doing something. So if you can make it over Friday before, so Friday the 5th, um, we are working with Old Soul to do a party at their facility as well. So we're going to set up, we are going to try to do a barrel pick and we're going to try to have like a certain number of people. So it might be, it might be limited to like the first 50 people that show up to that event are going to get access to do the barrel pick with us. Like just go through and sample and then choose which barrel you like, whichever one gets the most votes. We're going to bottle it up on site. So at the event, the first 50 people are going to get to help us with a barrel pick. Details pending on that. Like some of this stuff we're still trying to work out. And then they're literally going to bottle it that day while we're having a party in the parking lot. And you'll be able to buy a bottle of that um, to take home with you that day at the event, which is just going to be, that's a nuts thing. Like we like pushing the envelope. That's a push in the envelope. I've never had anybody say, hey, pick one. We'll bottle it up. Y'all can take it home with you. Um, so it's going to be a lot of fun there. Um, we're also going to we're going to be there doing some stuff. They're going to be bottling our barrel pick. We're going to be doing some stuff earlier in the day. But we're going to try to maybe get some food trucks there. Like we're still working out the details of that event. But if you've got time, be there Friday. We're going to do something really, really fun and cool. So Devin's going to be in Japan. That's pretty fun, though. Like, if I were going to be in Japan, I wouldn't be there either. But other than that, people want to camp so they can party. I mean, I might swing by and just see what's going on with the party. I'm not camping all night. I have, I'm going to have a hotel with a really nice bed. I'm going to sleep in it. I need my beauty sleep because we're going to go hard on Friday, and then we're going to go hard on Saturday. So I need a little rest in between. Eric, it is April the 6th. It's the Spillway event, April the 5th. We're going to be in Jackson, Mississippi, which is right next to Brandon, where, where the Spillway event is, um, doing something with Old Soul. So take a, cup, take a day off. Come on over Friday morning. Be there Friday afternoon. Plan on being there. Make sure you're in our mailing list or in our Discord or go to our patron. Um, there's a free tier on patron. If you, you know, if you don't want to pay money, that's cool. I understand. Um, just be in the free tier. Like Just connect with us somehow so we can post notifications. Also, if you're watching this, do me a favor. Like, I've been jumping on Twitter. Every day I've been trying to go on Twitter for an hour and just interact with folks. I need to grow that Twitter base. We got like 1,100 followers on Twitter. It's pretty measly. It sucks. Also, this past weekend, we had two impromptu meetups, one in Knoxville, one in uh, Gatlinburg. But it's hard to get in touch with. We can't get in touch with people on YouTube. So we posted it to Instagram. So when we go places, we're going to start posting to Instagram. So make sure you're following us on Instagram if you maybe want to be a part of our impromptu um, meetups. So follow us on some of the other platforms. It's just easier to communicate. I mean, we can't communicate on Twitch and YouTube and all those things when we do something impromptu. So, um, all right, let's go through this order. Let's get this blind out of the way. Number one, 
And if you're surprised by this, don't know where you've been. You're new to the channel, welcome. Thank you for joining. Um, and this is Koi Hill. This is one of the top two bottles I own. Like this is like top, definitely top five bottle I've ever tried in my entire life. So it's no surprise that Koi Hill was number one. Number two though, is the 12 year. And this one honestly is the best bottle to just sit down and have a pour of at any particular time. This right here, those where the surprises might have started for some of you, and that is the 2020 limited release rye, which is my favorite rye ever. Like this is my favorite rye I've ever had in my entire life. Jack Daniels, if I could get some single barrel barrel proofs or something of this quality, we would be besties. Like I, we would just, I don't, I don't know. What do you want? Like, what do you want to make that happen? If we're going to get it, we got two single barrel barrel proof rice coming. Can we get something like this? I don't know if you pick particular parts of the Rick house. I don't know what the criteria was for this release, but please, please, please give me some of this right here. Number three, and this is a close race for number three. I'm going to be honest, closer than I thought it was going to be. And it's probably because of the proof. This is the 10-year Jack Daniels, but it's just proof down too far. Honestly, the reason it's not up, it's not going to move up. I don't think it would move up. It might could jump the rye. It's definitely not going to jump the 12 or the Coy Hill, but it's just proof down. It would definitely have a wider gap between number four here and number five if it had a higher proof. Number five is a freaking single barrel barrel proof rye. Who would have thunk it? But you need to do a tater sticker for the Spillway Brusel Infinity Barrel to put on our barrel, our bottles when they're refilled. So Buck, already, already in the works. We already got a design for it. Uh, somebody gave me some artwork. I don't know where it came from. I don't know if we can use it, but like me as Buzz Lightyear, an infinity bottle to infinity and beyond. Um, so when you bring your bottle and pour it in, we're gonna tater sticker it, and then you gotta take your bottle with you. And then you gotta bring it back with the tater sticker for us to fill it, because we can't keep up with like 200 bottles. JD's West Fork Indy are getting off MGP. Keep an eye out. Nice, JD. So I have to check that out. Um, so this was this is where the surprises start. I'll be honest. Going into this, I didn't think this would. I thought this would be behind the uh, barrel proof single barrel, um, which is what comes up next. This is the um, Heroes Tribute single barrel barrel proof. And then we've got this little bitty guy here that I got from I don't know where. And then um, after that is the twice barreled rye. So a little, little, I guess a little um, unexpected results there. And then we get to the um, single barrel barrel proof, um, just like general shelf staple single barrel barrel proof. And then the lower proof rye, which was actually really good. I was surprised how much I liked that. And then we get to the regular release stuff, the bonded, and then uh, this bonded rye did better than I thought it would. And then way back here is Frank Sinatra, sorry Frank. Um, and the, the least favorite, but I did like it. I did like this, this is still good, but my least favorite was the triple mash tonight. So let me know in the chat if any of those were a big surprise to you and what you think right now your, fav your favorite Jack Daniels release is? Your favorite? Um, do you think Z-Bionics really helps? Yeah, I think so. I think it really helps. It helps pay some bills. I mean, I, I think it could, sure. Um, you know, it helps break down stuff and do things. It's science. What's up, ADHD whiskey in the house? Hopefully you're feeling good, man. Matt, you're doing all right. Matt, of course, Matt jumps in here. Matt, uh, first time I met Matt, he was like, yeah, man, I watched one of your live streams and you jumped in and you did like eight, you blinded eight whiskeys and it was like 10 minutes in the stream and you're like, what are we going to do now? So we are um, 14 Jack Daniels deep right now and we're now about to blind 10-year-old 1924 with 10-year-old Jack Daniels. Now, this one is... What's the proof on this guy? 100 proof, and this one is 97 proof. So that's fair. Um, I've got them here. Jill poured them for me a little earlier, and I used the Glen, I think. Is this? Yep, I used the Glen I was supposed to use. So I'm going to pull these two fresh, clean Glen Cairns I've got over here. 
and we are going to try, this is sample A, and this is sample B. Favorite right now that I can find is the single barrel, barrel proof rye. I, dude, it's hard to beat that, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna give myself a hefty pour, but we'll put this in our infinity blend just to make sure. I might, I might as well pour it all, right? Might as well pour it all because I'm not going to leave it in this little bottle right here. Haven't had any JD except for old number seven. Oh, you are missing out, Beach Sand. Sample B. 1924. I, I found a lot of 1924s. I passed on one. Um, I, I got one for me, one for a friend, and then I passed on one in Knoxville. So they were all over Knoxville. Like every store we went in seemed to have one of them. Um, I have not tried Peerless Double Oaked Rye, Abe. Um, let me know if that's a thing I should be trying. Like I didn't, I didn't know that was a thing. I like the Peerless Double Oaked. I wish Peerless would give us a Double Oak pick. Okay. What's up, Peerless? What we got to do? Uh, I lose 100 AA Rons for every Glen you clean. Well, we, I did notice, like I stopped washing the Glens and our concurrent viewers on YouTube started rising. Maybe there's some, maybe A.A. Ron was just trying to help us out. Like he was just trying to do us a favor. Who knew? I didn't know. Thank you, A.A. Ron, for your consideration. Just checking over on all of the platforms here to make sure everything's still going pretty smooth. I don't know why TikTok, I think I might have to pop TikTok out into its own. That's the problem. I gotta pop TikTok out into its own thing. And I messed that up. And now I'm getting freaking TikTok comments. Man, I appreciate that. How did Memphis go, Master of Wood? Memphis was out of this world. That was awesome. Um, so I have to remember to pop TikTok. TikTok. Lord, Jack Daniels, right? TikTok out into its own chat is what I was trying to say. 1920 or 1924? Um, I mean, I like the 20s. Uh, we'll see. We'll see about the 24 here. I don't know which one's which. This one is darker. Both of these are 10-year. This one is definitely the darker whiskey. I don't know which one this is, though. Uh, when am I coming to Wisconsin again? I'm not sure, but I'm sure it'll happen. Buster's in Memphis still won't, me let, won't let me in the back room, Larry says. Have you asked? Did you say Bruce went in the back room? Why can't I go in the back room? Oh. If I had to guess, that's the 24. If I just had to guess, that's the 24. And then still, if I had to guess, that's the 24. And if that's, whichever one this is, if this does not win this blind, I'm going to be surprised. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Choking on my own spit. Um, if that's the 24, if, if it is, I don't know. If that's the 24, this would have been a better blind against the 12 year. Would have been a better blind. Because it's like the, the flavors on that are just so much stronger and sharper. And this is softer and more muted, which reminds me of that 10 I had just a little while ago. Um, so it's, you know, we'll see. We're going to start with this one, though. Rob, you need to make a trip to Virginia. Check out Bowman Brothers and Fredericksburg. Make a pit stop in Williamsburg at Copper Fox and Eight Shires. Appreciate it, Rob. I, I, we're definitely coming to Virginia. I would love to check out Bowman. I would love to do a Bowman single barrel pick. That would be a lot of fun. Um, but I'm sure we'll get to Virginia sometime this year. Kobe, I have the Jack Daniels American single malt. It's decent for a single malt. Not about that life, though. I'll stick to bourbon. I had one. I gave it away. I didn't, I didn't like it at all. That would definitely be my least favorite Jack Daniels, if I had it here. Whatever this whiskey is, it's good. It doesn't stand out. Has a ton of nuttiness. It's a little muted. Like honestly, if that's the 10 with a full pour, I might put it, I might put it a little lower in my lineup. I might put it a little like the problem is knowing what these are. Right, I, honestly, knowing what they are messes with you a little bit because sometimes you're just like, well, that that's supposed to be special. I'd better put it somewhere. It's much more fun 
when we blind it. Um, and so if, if these were blinded, if that's the, whatever that one is, I would probably have put it below the single barrel barrel proofs going back to it. I probably would. And I don't, I'm just assuming it's the Jack Daniels, but I don't know. Doc Dave, New Hampshire, please get the old man of the mountain bottle and bond. Okay. That one smells so much nicer. It's a little harsh. This would not beat the 12 Jack Daniels. It's got to be the old Forester, though. And, and I don't know if it's because this bottle's been open for a while and it's got a little oxygen. It's not that old, though. Um, this one is sharper, you know, that, than the one I just had. The flavors are much more robust. I definitely like this one better than that one. But it's still like the oakiness just hits your palate kind of harsh. It leaves me with a harsh finish. Um, this one is better, but it's not even close to the Jack Daniels 12 year, not even close. So where would I put it in this lineup? Obviously I think that's the old Forester. We'll find out here in just a second, but in this lineup, this would be right in front of that Jack 10. If that's the old Forester. It would be right in front of whatever this is. And that's it. It wouldn't move up anymore. And honestly, I'm just not sure I would put those ahead of the barrel proofs. Going back to it, it's soft. That's got a lot of interesting things going on. I do like the flavors. I just need more oomph from it. Like I need more proof. And it doesn't seem to have it. Uh, I would say that one is substantially higher proof than this one, even though there's only three proof points difference between those two bottles that are that are in these glasses. I would have said this one drinks a lot hotter than that one and has more flavor. Ah, uh, Josh, I will take Jack 12 over Russell's 13. Almost definitely the batches I have. Now, I've had a Russell's 13 that's a lot better than the one I've got. But I like I would have to try that batch with Jack 12 back to back. But the batch I have, Jack 12 all day. All right, so I'm about to find out what these are. Y'all let me know. Do y'all think y'all would like a 1924 10 year or a Jack 10 year better? Let me know in the chat. It just leaves me with a little harsh oakiness. And so I just I can't love it. So I'm saying sample A is the Old Forester, and I'm saying sample B is the Jack Daniels. And I'm choosing the Old for what I think is the Old Forester. I'm choosing sample A because the flavors are just brighter and stronger and come through a little more, and then it gives me a little harshness. This one, the flavors are really solid on that, but they're a little tame, a little muted, a little, they fall off a little bit on the finish, right? So let's see, drum roll please. Sample A right here is Old Forester 1924. So we got those right. Um, and I'll take the 24 over the Jack 10, that batch of Jack 10, that batch. And that one's been open for a minute. This is a fresh bottle crack. Honestly, I think this bottle right here may get substantially better if it opens up. So if you let this sit, if we drink a little bit down, if I get a little bit out of this, um, I think that bottle could get better because I think it could soften, it could mellow a little, and some of those harshness that I get on the back of the palate could, could lighten up. And if it does... It could be substantially better than that bottle of Jack 10. I saw 1924 in a store for 190 yesterday. I mean, I think they're 130-ish MSRP, so they're expensive. That's just what it boils down to. When are you going to come out with your own top three brusal selection on the website? What do you mean by that? Top three brusal selection. Do you ever use a decanter? I mean, I have some. I'd never really use them, no. Joshua's done. He picked the old Forster. 
Say mash bill? What do you mean, Kyle? Oh, need to blind the 1924 and the blacktop early times? Is it out here? I, if it's, I don't think it's out here. It's in the back. We'll have to do that on a future stream. So um, I didn't realize that's the same mash bill, though. That's crazy. I think the 24 might get it, but honestly, it might not. Like, that's that's crazy. Um, that's that's actually a really good idea, Kyle. We'll do that one for sure. Gamble44 over on Twitch. What do you think about the ABC list for the allocation quarterly release this month? I haven't seen it. Let's pull it up. Let's pull it up. Um, I don't know why Donk's message did not come through. I know this is retail pricing, but is Old Fitz 8 worth the $110 price tag? Um, I mean, it's a beautiful bottle. The 8 is okay. I've had some 8s that were kind of really funky and weird. I've had some that were really nice. If I saw it for 110 I would buy it. But I buy dumb things. I, I waste money all the time. So it's interesting. Uh, the older stuff is really good. 13 and up, those are really, really good if you can get your hands on one of those. So let's look at the Alabama ABC list for so Alabama is a state run alcohol system they do a quarterly lottery I did not win because I've never I've literally never won the lottery in Alabama for whiskey um, and I am so I have to go stand in line and that's just not going to work for me so they've got a whole PDF here I don't want the freaking PDF what is this the, oh that's the price list I'm in the wrong place. How do I get to the special announcements? Um, Lord. So, I never win. And I don't know if I'm going to this. I, honestly, I think I might be in, um, I might be in New Orleans when this comes out. So, this is the monthly release. I can go to limited release. I can hit quarterly. And so you win a lottery, and then this is what you could possibly get. I'm going to go to Auburn, Alabama, which is where I would go. They have 2XO Gem of Kentucky, literally Basil Hayden. They have Basil Hayden in a lottery. Like, what kind of world do we live in? Blanton's Four Roses Single Barrel Private Select, 2024 Heaven Hill Heritage Collection, 18 years. I would buy that one if I got it. Um, I.W. Harper Cabernet Cask. I've seen those around. Uh, Michter's Sour. Why are they dropping a Michter's Sour Mash in the freaking lottery? Like, they just, they're like, we don't have enough bottles. Just drop anything. They're like, here's some Jack Daniels, old number seven. Uh, they are dropping a Mr. Sam Tribute, if you happen to get high enough. Old Fitz Decanter Eight Year, which we were just talking about. Uh, 1924 will be in there. Uh, Weller Antique 107, Special Reserve, Burnham Wheat Barrel Proof, Caribou Crossing, E.H. Taylor Small Batch, Eagle Rare, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, I'm assuming the A124s, Henry McKenna, an Old Forester Single Barrel Barrel Strength, an Old Forester Single Barrel Select, and a Smoke Wagon Uncut Unfiltered. So, my thoughts on the lottery are, I'm damn glad I didn't win this one. That's my thoughts. Like, what would I want? Like, literally on this list, what would I want from this list in Auburn? Um, okay, I might buy 2XO, but I can find that on the shelf. That's not, like, we're not standing in line. We're not winning that. Basil Hayden? Like, that's a joke. It's a 10-year Basil Hayden. Still a joke. Honestly, still a joke. Uh, Blanton's, not waiting in line for that. Four Roses Single Barrel Private Select. It's 104 proof. It's like it's not even high proof. Not waiting in line for that. Heaven Hill Heritage. They're probably going to have like three of those at most. Maybe one. And so you would have to be like top of the line to get that. Um, I.W. Harper Cabernet. No. Sour Mash. Like, lit, like real, that's allocated. Mr. Sam. Okay. Be nice to have one of those in MSRP. 
Um, Old Fitz decanter, eight year. Be great to get one of those. Uh, 1924, cool. I'll take a Weller Antique. Love to have that. Literally everything else here. E.H. Taylor Eagle Rare, not, not waiting on any of that. So unless I won top 10 in line, I wouldn't even show up. I wouldn't even show up. And honestly, if I'm not top six in line, I'm concerned I'm not going to get anything worth the effort. So that was really, really, that's a terrible lottery drop for the state of Alabama. Terrible lottery drop. Found a bottle of Still Austin. Nice. I buy dumb things. I waste money all the time. New favorite quote. I mean, it's true. I do. I Sometimes I just see stuff and I want it. Um, I wished I had enough money to buy all the dumb things I see that I want and enough land to store all the dumb things that I buy because that, like, realistically, half the dumb things I want to buy, I'm never going to do anything with. I just want to go out there every once in a while and say, man, I really should do something with that. Uh, Douglasville and get McKenna. Yeah, McKenna's, like, I saw all sorts of McKenna's everywhere. So, like, this is a really, really bad drop because the only stuff you want really is going to be top six maybe in line and so if you don't win top six, if you won 30th or 20, like there's just no reason to show up. Mr. Sam or Mellow Corn, dude, I heard they do a Mellow Corn store picks now. Like you can get a single barrel of Mellow Corn. Can I get cash strength single barrel Mellow Corn? I want that. I'm, I want in on that right now. Is the 1924 better than the old Forster 100 single barrel? Uh... <laughs> That honestly might be a good blind. So in a future video, maybe next week, we'll see. Um, in a future video, we will blind this. We will put this. We will put maybe some other Old Forester, maybe a 100 proof, maybe like a 100 proof regular release Old Forester. Let's throw the early times bonded in there, and let's see, um, see what shakes out. That would be a fun blind. Is that 10-year or 12-year Jack from Michigan? It's not the one I got from Michigan. No, I have not opened. Those are those are my backup bottles from this one. So these were both ones that I already had open, and then I got the 10 and 12 to back these up, but I haven't finished these yet. Cash Street Fireball Pick. We are talking about doing some fireball barrel aging experiments, so keep an eye out for the shorts for us doing that. That could be... Um, that could be a fun time for sure. I don't know anybody that's done a whole bunch of barrel aging of fireball. It's probably dumb. Y'all probably don't even want to see that. You probably don't. Uh, let's see. Check it on the stream. Everything looks good. Don't forget, after this stream is over, we are going to our week. I am going to jump into Discord. If you are a patron member, link your patron account to Discord. You can jump into the audio chat where everybody can talk. You can ask questions. We can just hang out, have a good time. Um, just kind of a, a different experience than here on the live stream. So let me know if y'all uh, if y'all jump in there. Uh, we had a huge one after the last stream. It was it was nuts. There were a bunch of folks in there. Um, no, not the free patron, unfortunately. Like we got to limit. Like there were so many people in there um, last time, so we got to kind of limit the the number. Sorry about that. Lord. We got a lot of comments on Instagram, and none of them came through. There are just a ton of folks. Like, we, Lord, the Instagram chat may be as active as the YouTube chat, and I apologize for people over there. First time we've uh, spun up this stream on Instagram, and so we have to, um, we got to figure out why those chats didn't come through. I'll get it worked out for the next time, for sure. David over on Twitch asked, uh, thoughts on Redwood Empire? Um, I, I really like the cash strength. They sent us a cash strength, was it a pipe dream? We released that. They released 200 bottles for our uh, patron members, and dude, absolutely loved it. We're going to try to do a barrel pick from Redwood Empire, but their barrel pick program isn't ready until later this year. So I'm hoping we can get that barrel pick rolling sometime later this year or early next year. Any upcoming releases you're excited about? Like general releases, there's a new Coy Hill coming. Um, from our barrel picks, um, there's some I can't tell y'all about yet. Like I, if you were watching the stream at the start, we went through a whole bunch of updates. And just know there's stuff going that I can't tell you about yet. So, And there's some stuff we're working on that might take a year plus to actually come to fruition. 
So that's a big word, I know. Um, but lots, I mean, I'm excited about everything. That's what's great about this, this stuff. I'm more excited about finding small distilleries that are doing great stuff. So we're talking to a lot of, of small distilleries that may be doing great stuff. I don't know till I try their whiskey. Um, I'm excited about a lot of the barrel picks. I'm excited about these private release uh, blends that we're trying to do because we found some folks that make great whiskey. Can we do something unique that they've never done in a small batch for the B team? And so it'll be a unique expression of their stuff. It may be something finished. It may just be a blend like the Ben Holiday blend. Can we just pull everything from the top of the Rick House? I don't know. We'll find out. It'll be fun. Tell me about Wild Turkey 12 year. Oh, it's so delicious, Steve. I just got that bottle. A friend of mine went to Indonesia, brought me back a Wild Turkey 8 and a 12. And it is... It's the best wild turkey product I have. Like, I love it. Like, that is exactly what I want out of a out of a whiskey. 12 years old, just not too oaky. All the flavors are just very well-rounded and sophisticated and 101 proof. Like, that 100 to 107 proof, so freaking beautiful. Uh, ever had Caribou Crossing? Yes. Not a Canadian whiskey fan. It's not, I mean, it's not bad. It's just not good either. Uh, no idea. They just the the label just got approved on the Coy Hill, Mike Davis. Don't know when they're actually releasing it though. Can you do a blind of double barrel Jack Daniels versus number twenty seven? I don't have the number twenty seven, uh, but the double barrel Jack Daniels would probably. Well, I mean, the only d double barrel I've got is the rye. So, um, really appreciate your channel. I'd like to be in your sponsors club when you get more spots available, Brian. There. So what you got to do with, with our patron, we don't want too many people like jumping in the high tiers and getting access to like really hard to find barrel picks and then bouncing. So um, what you, there's the lower tiers are available, jump into the lower tier, and then you got to kind of work your way up if and when we open up more spots. And we open up more spots depending on how many barrels we buy and have access to and how many folks are actually interested in, in acquiring barrel picks. So... It's like we're still trying to figure that out. Like we're, we're trying to be fair and figure all that out. Um, but they're, the lower tiers are open. So that, that helps the channel a whole lot. That gives us an idea of how many barrel picks we need to be acquiring. And then, you know, hopefully if, we're, if we've got a ton of them. Now, what we're trying to do is just get more and more super desirable barrel picks. Uh, we don't want one barrel that like everybody wants that one and then the rest of them are consolation prizes. We want like three, four, five of them that are like, oh my God, if I got any of these, it would be great. That's what we're trying to do. And then we're trying to do the special blends that are like, buy as many as you want. Everybody gets as many of these as they could possibly get. Um, yeah, I found Uncle Nearest is a Canadian whiskey. I, I'm pretty sure that's Tennessee whiskey, but I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know a whole lot about them. Need to ship to Michigan or worthless? I mean, I wouldn't say worth, maybe worthless to you, fair point. Um, we are working on shipping to Michigan. What we would like to do, here, here are my priorities. Here are my priorities, okay? Priority number one, getting access to good whiskey. Priority number two, not going to jail or getting audited by some government agency. Number three, shipping to Michigan. That, that's my priority list. Um, so as long as I can not have a problem with priority list number two, I will work on priority list number three. They are working on it. They have told me that they are working on it. We have begged for it. We have asked for it. We have conveyed to our retailer how important it is. And they are like, you have no idea how much money we are spending to make that happen, but it is going to be June or July before it actually comes to fruition. I'm using that word again. That's my big word of the day. Fruition. Um, did try Angel Envy. Nice. Enjoyed it. Awesome. All my bottles are sourced in Tennessee. Uh, that's cool, too. Just subscribed on Patreon. Appreciate it there. Gamble44 over on Twitch. Let me know how y'all are liking that Twitch experience. Facebook in the house as well. Uh, we got a bunch of Instagrammers. I'm going to jump over and check out the Instagram chat. I'm going to scroll all the way to the bot. Like, I can't even get to the bottom of the Instagram chat. Now, it tells me every time somebody has joined and left. That may be the problem. But Jeff Mandela, hopefully you're still here. 
What are your thoughts on Still Austin? I just we just had a barrel from Still Austin. We just released it. I I really like Still Austin. I wished it had a little more proof. Their cash strength is like 116 proof, but it's because how they age and how they add water throughout the process. For a Texas whiskey though, really good cuz Texas whiskey can get like super um, heavy on the oak tannins and the way Still Austin ages kind of diminishes that effect a little bit. So as far as Texas whiskey goes, Still Austin is a little more my jam than most of them. Twitch is too crazy with the ads? Does it, is it ad and ads? So we, with YouTube, we've been turning the ads down and say be super conservative with the ads. So priority number one is keeping Jill happy. I'm just talking about in, in whiskey terms, not like life terms there, Paul. Uh, Red Farron? I don't know what that is. Midwest. Like, I, I don't even know what the Midwest is. I mean, I know what the Midwest is, but, like, technically, what's the Midwest? I don't know. Thunderclap has seen zero ads over on Twitch. So what are these people talking about? I don't know. I'm taking feedback. It ain't even true. What are you doing? Appreciate it there. Um, ooh, Woodmeister? Is that right? Did I get that right? Uh, when did you sell all the, I have not sold all the Ben Holiday, but, so we've got two Ben Holiday barrels that'll be released end of next month. Um, again, at join one of the patron tiers, join the free patron tier, but then like, you know, you're going to, you, the Ben Holidays are going to go pretty quick. Now they're going to be two Ben Holidays and a Frey Ranch in that drop. So they're going to last a little longer than they might normally because that's three super, super desirable bottles. But honestly, if you don't get one, your consolation prize is a freaking Crittenden's Toasted Pecan. Oh, my God, you won the freaking lottery. Give me That is better. Our drop next month is like 100% better than the actual Alabama quarterly lottery system. Give me a break. Uh, this like so I don't even, We're not even partnered on Twitch. So I don't know. I, I think he's talking in general. We're not partnered on Twitch, so I don't think they, I don't think they show any ads. Yeah, that's, that's right. Soft red wheat. Oh, so good. So good. Kurt Gibson stopping in. Appreciate the support, Kurt. Thanks for hanging out with me. All right. Um, we're going to go here for another 15 minutes or so. Wish to buy a 2023 BTAC Eagle Rare. No suggestions on how you find one of those. I want to say the Eagle Rare 17 was like the hardest to find this year. I know several folks that get access to BTEC stuff and they couldn't find an Eagle Rare 17 this year. So definitely hard to come by. Ryan over on Instagram, I see you. Appreciate you swinging by and hanging out. No spec Zodified, we are working on trying to get into Canada or Canada, as Jill sometimes calls it. Um, it's like legally, it's just difficult. So. Uh, where did I get my shelves at? We I had somebody make them. Found a local woodworker, Plainsman Woodworking. Y'all go raid his Facebook page. Be nice to him. Greg's a cool guy. Uh, but he made these. He built the whole bar. Um, so y'all, like, I let's see if I can show y'all. I can show y'all more of the bar than what you could see now. You could kind of see the the lights and everything at the front of the bar there. Um, it's a really, really cool bar. And you see all of the shelves. If you're on widescreen, if you're on TikTok, turn your phone sideways. You'll be able to see more. Um, and then you see all the shelves and my mess I've got on the bar right here right now. But um, he built the whole thing. So did a great job. Um, we're going to do a Chicago hunt sooner or later. I don't know when yet. Um, I did try someone else's found north. thought it was pretty interesting. Rob's jumping into his Eagle Rare tonight. Appreciate it, Rob. Thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, Calumet Farm 16 year. I like the older Calumet stuff. If it gets younger than 15, though, I would just avoid it. Oh, he's definitely talented. And he's building the new shelves and the cabinets for in there. Like, he built all the cabinets, the bar, like everything. So, and I am, um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty peculiar or particular. That's what I'm looking for, particular about what I want. He did a good job. Eric B says, if I'm on TikTok, get off of it. Okay, so everybody right now that's watching on TikTok, Eric thinks we should leave TikTok. Y'all let me know what y'all think about that. Um, go Bucks. I'm assuming you're talking about the Milwaukee Bucks, Chan? Um, yeah, go Milwaukee Bucks. 
Go dogs. We got a bourbon hunt coming pretty soon. We went and did some bourbon hunting in Athens, Georgia, uh, with some Georgia football players. So that was fun. We had a good time. Got some decent bottles over there. Peculiar. You're right. You're right. Peculiar's right. Wasn't the word I was going for, but probably right. Anyone try the 1792 12 year? I like it. My favorite 1792 product. For sure. By far. Favorite 1792. The Jack Bonded Rye is very good and widely available. Yeah, I like it. C923 in Arizona. Uh, dude, those were super popular. Gamble's loving the hunting videos. Jerry Thompson says War Eagle in the chat over there. We need, so mods, we need like a word replacement. So when somebody types in those words, those R O L L T I D E words, is there any way we can just automatically replace it with War Eagle? Let me know. I'll do it. Goose Island favorites. I mean, just the normal stout. The normal release stout is my favorite Goose Island. Bourbon County stout is my favorite um, from them for sure. Short barrel with Booker's juice. Nice. Is it the toasted that we released, Gavin? That's a good bottle. Uh, Gamble 44 saying War Eagle over here in the chat as well. Favorite Michter's bottle? That's a tough question. You're asking me tough questions because I'm a fan of the Michter's Barrel Strength Rye. But this past year, the Michter's 10 Bourbon and Michter's 10 Rye, so good. And so, it like, do you want something that's like in your face, super high proof, or you do do you want something that's like subtle and nuanced? And um, so, like that Michter's 10 Rye has definitely moved up my list of favorite bottles. Um, and someday, like most days, I'm just going to want the Michter's 10 Rye. Uh, so it's going to be the 10 Bourbon, the 10 Rye, and the Michter's Barrel Strength Rye as my favorite bottles. But, like, that's almost everybody's favorite Michter's. I mean, outside of the super rare stuff you can never get, right? Uh, haven't tried the Goose Island Eagle Rare yet, David, but it's coming. I've been saving those. We've got a bunch of beer aging in barrels at Red Clay right now. And I was waiting to do something like when those come out, maybe doing some black. I don't, I don't know what I was going to do, but I'm saving them for when I decide what I'm going to do. And then I'll do that thing. What's your favorite old fits? Right now, the one I've got open, the 17, really good. Um, from memory, from history, I think it's the 13 year. We were at a bar in, me and a friend were in a bar in Scottsdale, and they had the 13, and we finished that bottle. It was beautiful. Uh, but I've never owned a bottle of Old Fitz 13. I would really like one. Tyler, late to the live stream tonight. Looking forward to the next drop. Going to try my best for a toasted pecan. Green River Toasted is Utazimo. And for those that are new to the channel, don't worry. It's an inside joke. Um, but if you, so we're going to drop a toasted pecan. You're going to have a chance at that. But if you can get the spillway in Mississippi, I'm pretty sure they're going to have toasted pecans in their lottery drop on April 5th, 6th, April 6th. So you're going to get one a lot faster from them than you'll get it from us. Holiday Soft Red Wheat, Rick House is, oh yeah. So the their bondage great, their Rick House proof is even better. Their single barrel Rick House proofs, even better than that. So definitely try that. If you can find a single barrel, 100%, it's a buy anytime you see one. After stumbling upon your videos of trying to get into bourbon, always been a vodka person. I don't know. I'm trying to develop a palate taste, but haven't yet. I got Buffalo Trace and Evan Williams small batch. Uh, not really a fan of either straight. Okay. So here's a few things I want you to do. When you have whiskey, I want you to get a decent glass. Like these are Glen Cairns. You can get these with our logos on them at bruzel.com if you want one. It costs a lot more to have our logos on them. That's just what it cost us. You can get them from Amazon. You can buy like a six pack for a lot less than you can buy them with my logo on them. So get, get do whatever you want to do, right? But get you a nice glass. I like Glens. There's a bunch of them out there, but get a proper tasting glass. Uh, when you sit down, sit down and have two pours. Don't start with super high proof stuff. Start with low proof stuff. Make two pours. I'd rather you have two half pours than one full pour. So I want you to start tasting the differences, right? I'm going to try this. I'm going to try that. I'm going to taste the differences. If that's if you still are a little too harsh, you know, if it's like, hey, this is a little too much, a couple of drops of water 
or like I, I think ice adds too much harshness to whiskey, so I don't want mine over ice. But a couple of drops of water can really open it up, can take the proof down, um, and then just try a bunch of different stuff. Uh, those you mentioned, Buffalo Trace and Evan Williams Small Batch, not bad whiskeys at all. So if you don't like those, again, add a little water. Try it over ice. You might prefer it over ice, but I would suggest a good whiskey glass. I, my experience in a glass like this is 100% better than a rocks glass. Some people would argue different. Those people are wrong, and they reserve the right to be wrong. But better in a good whiskey glass and um, a couple of drops of water if it's still too much until you get used to it, right? Uh, the Banana Foster. I've had the Banana Fosters. It was good. It's weird. Um, you picked it up because of one of my videos. Hey, influencer baby, look at that. How much is a pour in a Glen Cairn? I mean, the pour's the same cost whether you get it in a Glen or not. So what I re explain a Rick House. Yeah, Jay. Um, so a Rick House is just a place where they store barrels. So that is just um, fancy terminology for barrel proof, right? Um, so the proof, you know, the proof it was in the barrel. So some crystal sherry glasses are fine. Like, that's fine. Like, it, a fluted glass doesn't have to be one of these. You can find a fluted beer glass or a fluted wine glass. Like, there's hundreds of different design whiskey glasses. All of them are good. Um, just don't, I just don't like drinking it out of a rocks glass or like a, a highball glass or something like that, right? Justin had a great time in Gatlinburg, took a lot of photos with folks, got recognized a ton. So it was fun. Natty Witt's cheap. Then buy cheap glasses. Just get something with a little flute to it. That's all. Find some, go to TJ Maxx, find you some fluted glasses. Uh, so like I said, I prefer Glen Cairns. This is a brand of glass. They have a, a trademark on this shape. Um, I like these. Now, Norlands has glasses. Um, the uh, aged and ore, the aged and ore glasses are really, really nice. They're a little larger, and sometimes if I'm just outside sitting around a campfire, I prefer those. Um, these are a little more dainty. I like the little knob. I like to hold it. I like to stick my pinky out. I like to feel like I'm sophisticated. Randy, next bourbon hunt video, checking in from South Florida. Um, the next one to release, got to be Athens, Georgia, I think. I would think it's Athens. Uh, we did one in Knoxville. So Athens and Knoxville are, are the only two that I can remember that are done that have not been released yet, um, which which is the next to be filmed. I'm headed down to New Orleans, so I'll probably film that one week after next. Visky glasses are good, too. I've got some Viskies around here, I think. Um, Visky has a nice glass. Age Denor has a nice glass. Visky makes really nice products. H. Denor makes really nice. Honestly, they're probably better quality than these Glens, but they're just not the smaller shape that I'm looking for. Um, I do have some Horse Soldier. David wasn't a huge fan of it. Uh, Ever hunt in North Carolina? Not yet, but it's coming sometime this year. Hopefully, like we're thinking maybe summer, we can start hitting the East Coast. All right, guys, I think we are going to call it a stream right here. I'm going to have a little restroom break, run upstairs, get me a fresh Dr. Pepper, and then, um, actually, I may have a fresh Dr. Pepper, but I'm going to take a little restroom break, and then I'm going to jump over on Discord, hang out with supporters that are over there. Um, if you're a member on YouTube or something like that, uh, you need to, like, hit up a mod and see if you can get access to it. Um, Chris says, we can't all be rich like TJ. You can't, man. You could. You could. I'm not that special. Just start a YouTube channel, get a bunch of views, man. And then you can buy fancy glasses like I have right here. You know, there's no way somebody like a carpenter will be able to afford fancy glasses like this with logos on it. Um, so appreciate y'all hanging out. Again, we will see y'all over in the supporter-only audio chat here in just a few minutes for those that can make it. Otherwise, we'll catch up with y'all next week. Hopefully, Jill will be back. She'll be back to feeling well, and we should be live again. We're going to stick to 7 o'clock. Y'all let me know if you like the 7 o'clock. We started at 7. We went to 9 central time. Uh, we used to do 8 to 10, but 
We noticed a lot of folks dropping off toward the end of the stream. It's getting kind of late, right? It's 10 o'clock. People got to get up and go to work in the morning. Can't stay up and drink all night. So we're trying a little easier time for folks. Y'all let me know if you like this better. Um, all right, there you go. So you should share your Discord as a link. We do over on YouTube. We got to get some mods over on Facebook. Like Facebook's still a new thing. This is still on like our what, third stream in a row or so over on Facebook. Uh, maybe not in a row. I think we had one we, we couldn't do there. Uh, we will get to where we're sharing it as a link. It might be in the description, Daniel, of the stream. Check that out. If not, um, I will I will make sure we update it everywhere next go-round. So looks like folks are liking the 7 p.m. time. We'll see how the numbers come in. But catch up with y'all later. We'll see y'all over on Discord here in just a few minutes.